Hi guys and welcome to another tip of the week with Helping Hands. This week we're going to be talking about how to counter blobs. Now I've had this question almost weekly from my, uh, my fans and they're always asking how do I counter blobs hands? So um, I thought I might as well do a tip on this. So uh, let's get on to the units from each faction as, well, as we normally do um, which are going to be effective at countering blobs. Right. And to begin things let's go with Austere. So the Austere Sniper. Generally you probably think, well, hang on a minute, the Austin Sniper's a one man, it can't kill blobs that effectively, which is true. But what it can do is it can bleed people. And I'll show you a bit later on how effective the Austin Sniper and snipers in general can be in dealing with blobs. Next, let's go on to the MG42. Great unit for suppression. You know, big blob comes forward, you can, the MG42 gets a good burst off, they're all going to be suppressed. Your, you know, MGs in general are your units to counter blobs. Next, indirect fire, we have the uh, mortar, the, the German mortar. And then we have the LEFH and the Panzwerfer. Both the all these indirect fire units are all very good against dealing blobs and damage to blobs. Next onto the OKW units over here. So starting from the lowest, uh, we have the LEFH. So again, indirect fire. I'm sorry, the uh, League uh, indirect fire unit here. The MG34 again, as previously said, good at suppressing. Now the infrared half track doesn't. Um, kill anything obviously but it does what it does do is it gives you vision of where those blobs are going to be moving which is great in unison with um, the, the Sturm Tiger and the Stuka both these units here um, you know if you've got vision you can then anticipate their movement and therefore you can fire a Sturm Tiger shell or a Stuka barrage um, to meet that movement of that enemy inf infantry um, and also we have the um, the flat half track here this unit um, it doesn't get used that much because it doesn't got that much armor and it dies quite quickly. However, it is very good at suppressing and uh, pinning enemy troops quite quickly um, and could be a very good unit to counter a big block coming forward um, if it might be uh, used correctly. And then, yeah, and also we have over here the Goliath. Now, um, okay, you know, another key aspect uh, to counter blobs is uh, explosives. And specifically um, with this unit here, the Goliath is great at, you know, destroying entire blobs. If, they, if a big blob walks over it, you detonate it, you're going to kill a lot of units. So um, this is your a, a really good unit to counter blobs with if you're up against an opponent um, who likes to do that. However, again, with this unit, you need to be in camouflage um, to be effective. Otherwise, the opponent can see a mile off and then uh, and avoid it, right? Next on to the British forces over here. So again, British sniper, Vickers. This time we have the land mattress for indirect fire. A very good unit for countering blobs. Um, we have the, the sexton over here. Again, our indirect fire piece. Also we have the valentine here. Now the valentine is a very good um, tank for like the same purpose of the infrared half track because it can give that uh, observation mode ability which allows um, uh, you to see where those where, where those blobs are coming from, so it, it allows your you to then fire your your, your um, for instance your sexton in the right place. Um, and then we have the Churchill. So all flame tanks are quite good against blobs because um, they do damage over time in a certain area, um, and flamethrowers just you know in general do a lot of damage to infantry. So yeah, especially like the Churchill, the the the, uh, the the unit in the game that has the most armor for flame um, with, with a flamethrower. This is your unit that it'll be a good unit to deal with inf like a big blob of infantry. And also the AVRE, same kind of role of the Stem Tiger, indirect fire can, um, you know, if that shell does hit an enemy unit, it will do a lot of damage. Okay, next onto the Soviet units. Uh, okay, so we're going to get the Soviet sniper, MG, uh, Maxim, both mortars, indirect fire units here. Uh, for the Soviets, the 120mm uh, millimeter mortar and the 82mm mortar squad. Uh, the ZIS gun I put there because it's the light artillery barrage that the ZIS gun does, as illustrated here. If this hits a blob, that shell will do a lot of damage, and you get a, quite a few shells in one barrage. So that's very, you know, using that ability is quite useful for dealing with blobs if you if, if it's being charged by one. Uh, again, indirect fire units here. We have the Katusha and uh, the SU-76. Let's talk about the SU-76 first. Again, same barrage that the uh, ZIS gun has. This, instead of the, you know, the system costs 60 munitions, um, but the SG-76 one is free. Basically does the exact same thing. Um, and that barrage, if it hits a blob, will do, also do quite a bit of damage. Katusha, you know, main artillery unit that's very good for blobs. Probably one of the best units for blobs that's non-doctrinal. 
Um, and here we have two doctrinal uh, artillery pieces, the ML20 152mm uh, gun howitzer and the B4. Uh, both very good for dealing with blobs. Um, and then the KV-8, as previously mentioned, flame tanks are also very good against dealing with um, enemy infantry in general. IS, I put the ISG-152 as well because this unit can deal with blobs at a safe distance, it has the range. And the high explosive shells that you can switch to will do a lot of damage to units that are clumped up. So if lots of units are together like blobs, then they would, you know, the ISU is your unit of choice. Okay, now finally onto the US forces here. So we have the 50 cal machine gun. We also have the the M5 the M15A1 AA half track. And this unit is I would consider quite good for dealing with blobs because um, it can uh, at max range it has quite a bit of dis uh, range and um, its and its gun can suppress. So you can kite quite effectively with this with this unit. However, it hasn't got a lot of armor, so and will be taken out by Shreks quite easily. So I would use this unit for dealing with infantry that does not have that many Shreks with them. Um, then we have the MAA1 Howitzer Mortar Carrier. This is a good one unit for uh, tackling bobs at range um, with their 75 millimeter barrage. Also, the Sherman Bulldozer has a very good um, round that does a lot of damage to blobs. Uh, then again, indirect fire units here, we have the, the, the American Mortar that is very likely going to get added to the new get, uh, to a later patch. And we also have the uh, M175mm pack howitzer, very good for blobs. And then the doctrinal M21 Mortar half jack, which is um, fairly okay. I mean, it has the white phosphorus barrage as well, so if you drop that on a suppressed blob, that's going to burn, that's going to uh, ruin them and make them much more easier to kill. Also, uh, then some of the top units for dealing with blobs is USF. The Goliope, probably number one unit there. Very good blob counter. As, as, and then we have the Priest uh, Mortar Carriage as well. Both these doctrinal abilities uh, units. Sorry. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how effective an MG42 and combined with a mortar is against a, a, um, a blob coming in. So here we have a conscript blob that's coming barreling down um, this road here, trying to go for this um, this cutoff point right now. And as you can see, this entire blob will all get suppressed because they're all together. And if they're all together, this suppression will, will start to affect them all. And as you can see, because they're all grouped together, this one MG is being able to suppress basically, basically this entire blob. And now, because they're all um, like slow and, and pinned, the mortar is gonna is, will do a lot of damage, and when squads are pinned, they they take more damage. So you can see this mortar is coming down. This you know, all these rounds are coming coming in, and it's much easier to get killed with the mortar because of these squads aren't moving. Okay, and look, this MG is not taking a single loss here, even though one of the dudes is out of cover, and this entire block has dying. been easily quelled. Okay, this time we're going to do something a little bit different. Now with this blob, they are going to be flamethrower engineers. Now, when if you are up against someone who has mixed in units like this into a um, um, a blob, you need to be uh, you need to get your MG42 to target these squads down first. Now, what you'll see, hopefully, with this blob is that is the um, is how if you don't target down the flamethrowers first, the MG will be taken out. And because the MG is in green cover, it's, going, it's very likely it's going to die. And as you can see here, the, uh, the uh, flamethrowers, even though they were all blobbed up together, have been able to take out this MG42. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you can target the, um, the flamethrowers first. And that way, um, you ma so you manually do that, and that way it's, still, it's much easier, easier to suppress this entire blob. Right? So I'm going to do another demonstration now uh, with that in, a, um, in effect. So what... Okay, so we're now going to demonstrate this with this MG42. So it's always important when you have an MG, you want to target the enemy priority squad. So squads that can do a lot of damage to your squad. Squads like those flamethrowers and maybe squads that can throw um, a bundle grenade that could do a lot of damage. So now Glorious will attack and um, we will see um, you know, how to use this MG effectively. Um, you also got to be careful though, but when you manually select enemy squads, um, if you misclick, you will unpack. So you've got to be sure that you are manually targeting these squads. So you need to be careful when you do this. So here comes this enemy blob. It starts suppressing it. And now we see this, this flamethrower comes from the side. So this, this uh, um, flamethrower needs to be targeted out first. Now this one. Now we need to target this one over here. Before this one starts firing again. Suppress that guy. 
Get this in. There's mortar as well to fire in from the top. Then we need to target the one that's got unsuppressed. He's down. Let's target the other end. Uh, Flamethrower. Flame Give that one. And now we can probably retreat. Now, really, in, a, in an engagement like that, I would have probably retreated because I might have, you know, a flamethrower might have, ca uh, have, come, uh, have come in. But, you know, in a realistic game, you know, I only had one MG there. I would probably have had, like, more, you know, I had, you know, maybe grenadiers in support that I could probably use the rifle grenade to help my, help myself out. So that rifle grenade could have targeted the uh, the flamethrower that I might have got out of my line of sight with the, M the MG. And I would have, been, I would have been able to do a lot of, um, you know, it had that engagement perform a lot better. But really, if you look at that engagement, my MG, even though I lost three men and had to retreat, it killed two flamethrower squads and it did a lot of damage to uh, three out of the conscript squads. And the mortar also, um, you know, did a bit of damage there and and uh, k helped killed off some squads. So we'll now move on to a, a second aspect of uh, blob attacks that you need to defend against. Okay, this time we're gonna you uh, my opponent Glorious is going to use mortar smoke to advance to give himself some cover with his blob, and I'm going to uh, use uh, react to that um, effectively. Okay, so here we go. So now Glorious is going to drop this mortar smoke and, and advance. So what you do is whenever you see uh, or you think that your opponent um, is going to do this, so whenever you see some mortar smoke that's dropped in front of your MG, you need to be thinking, right. He's probably going to follow up with an attack. So as soon as you see this mortar smoke come in, you think, right, my MG is now going to lose its line of sight, and therefore if I leave it there, it's going to be useless. So I'm going to immediately pull it back, reposition it, in time, hopefully just in time, before this, um, to then probably surprise this blob as it comes through the smoke. Because once it comes through the smoke now, I'll be able to see it. So now we've repositioned my MG, uh, and now we, we're ready to deal with this blob that's come through. And especially now that he's crossing the road, he's going to be in trouble. We can follow up, it, like I say earlier, with like a rifle grenade. Now that this blob's all blobbed up with the, with the, with the um, grenadier. He's doing a little bit more DPS there. And there we go. All this blob's going to get suppressed and killed. All because I think this is my MG, which you must do. What we're going to do here is Glorious is going to attack with a rifleman blob and use smoke effectively to try and stop my MGs from firing upon him. However, this, I'm going to try and show you how here to counter that by um, trying to uh, reposition your MGs so that one is covering the other while one is backing away to reposition, right? So now Glorious will attack and I'll try my best to defend against it. I've also got this MG, uh, this grenade a bit far forward to give myself some time to react in case to see what you give me some time to see this blob is coming. So here comes the blob coming charging forward now. This here comes the blob as well, so I'm going to reposition this MG. Here comes the smoke as well, so I'm going to reposition this MG back. Slightly, as fast as I can. Just to, like I say, I'm going to lob down some uh, rifle grenades. This MG over here is covering my side. And now he's going to get suppressed again. Went back way, trying to get out of range of grenades, creep back in the way. Maybe retreat this guy here. So I've only lost three men so far. Look how much damage my, uh, I've inflicted to my opponent by carefully backing away my MGs. So this MG was, well, it might be in flanked here, but then I'm just going to bring him around here. I don't have to retreat him because I can you know, replace this MG to cover for him. And maybe even lob a cheeky rifle grenade over the hedge here. And maybe an MG this way to cover both sides. So if he does try to flank around, I'm still covered for it. Squad, We're now going to be do um, the Captain on Me ability, which uh, Captain Prius is famous for using. So what happens here is that Glorious is going to come in. As soon as his squads get suppressed by my MG, he's going to use the Captain on Me ability, and that's going to unsuppress them. And I'm going to try and react to that as well. So this is how, again, you try and react to a blob that might be... Um, that you know, uh, doing well against suppression uh, using this ability. Again, same thing with the smoke, you just gotta uh, su suppress them and then back up and reposition it and keep falling back and keep bleeding them. And just trying to stay, and, and the, the key thing is to always stay as, ma as, far as, way, as far away as possible against rifles because they are the ones that do as most damage the closer they get to you. So you always try and keep distance away from them. And your MGs and your Grens will do more damage at range compared to them. Okay, so now Glorious will attack and I'll try my best to defend against it. So here comes this uh, enemy blob. Here comes the smoke again. Reposition this MG. 
MG is going to quickly face round again. He's used the on me ability, so all his squads are unsuppressed. Gonna use my sniper's uh, suppression ability here. This is all popped up as well. Might be able to get a good kick, kick in here. Good death though. And, when, and also, when they all do the on me ability, they all group up together. So this is the perfect time to lob in a rifle grenade. If you get if you're quick enough to uh, act to uh, act. But because I read business from my MG, you see here, uh, I can easily dodge these grenades as well, and um, you know easily suppress this blob and, and, and kill it off. Like so. And I didn't lose a single. Uh, unit, you know, a couple of mad power bleed here on, on my Grens, but you know, in general, that was a very successful engagement. I killed his entire blob without losing anything of my own. Okay, now I will show you how effective snipers are going to be against blobs. So here we have a, um, a, a few rifles over here and an LT that you just can't see out, out, out of the um, in the fog of war. And I'll show you what you should be doing with snipers. Now snipers are great for bleeding an enemy blob and are not taking any losses themselves. So here's the enemy blob, and first of all, so I'm going to get always fire at max range so they can't fire back so now I'm gonna now I'm going to attack the attack move and then back away and then he's gonna try and follow me I might even be able to lure him into an MG over here I might get the incendiary round off fire again back away again lure the enemy into an MG so the MG is going to do damage here. He looks like he was going to try another smoke grenade. So he might reposition my MG quickly here. Target down this this one man, this squad over here that's not moving. Then make then pop in the uh, incendiary rounds here to finish the squad up before he can retreat. Reposition my MG as well to cover my snipers. Keep back pedaling, not taking any losses myself. Reposition, fire off the ability again when I can. Even if he lobs in another incendiary grenade, I can easily pull back. Now there's. Now the enemy squad's at three, man. I can get up quite close to do damage because I, I'm sure that these uh, these snipers can uh, guarantee another kill here. So here comes another shell, one here, a bit closer, and then I can do the nice last incendiary ability, finish the squad off. And there you go. I've been able to kill three rifles without taking a single loss myself, all because I just backpedaled with my snipers, keeping them at distance. This is a great way to deal with blobs because here um, I am dealing damage against my opponent and not losing and not bleeding any manpower myself. So my opponent has to keep reinforcing, even though if they don't lose those squads, um, they have to. You know, they're going to be back at base with like two man, one man squads, and they're going to have to reinforce fully, and that's going to be really expensive. Whereas you have not taken any losses, and you can just afford to tack up and maybe get yourself a tag, a tiger out, or some armor, which is just going to help you in the longer run against your your opponent. Next, we're going to be moving on to uh, uh, explosives like mines and demolition charges and Goliath. So here we have. A, a minefield. Now, uh, Glorious is going to charge through this minefield to just demonstrate how effective a minefield is against a a, a big blob this size. So even if it was just one squad, it'd take a lot of damage. But as you can see, this entire squad is all bunched up, and the mines are hitting them a lot. They're all going to take a lot of damage here moving through, and they've lost like half their force. And then by the time they get through the minefield, they can easily be cleaned up by a few other enemy units. What I'm going to do now is show you how effective demolition charges are effective against blobs. So here we have a Volks Grenadier blob that's going to be moving forward. Um, it's a good idea to put demolition charges on spots of like um, green cover uh, where blobs might go to try and take cover um, or near spots um, of vital importance. So um, here's a, um, a tractor and I think, oh look there's some green cover there and I'm going to move my blob forward here and take advantage of this cover. Or I might be trying to charge through and chase something. And now the demolition will blow up. And look, I've just lost three entire squads. Uh, because all my squads were bunched up together. So there you go. If you de if you put demolition charges in, good, in in locations that you think an opponent might take with their blob. Um, you can, they can be greatly beneficial to you. Because for 90 munitions you can wipe like maybe three to four. Maybe even five squads if you're lucky. Um, and you know, even might And then look, the threat drops as well. So you, know, you're quite, you might be able to get a nice weapon pickup as well from that. Now I'm just going to demonstrate the same thing with the Goliath. So here we go, Glorious's blob is going to come through here. And I'm lying in wait with my Goliath. And, and as the blob gets near, nears, I might try to quickly run in before he's got time to react. And look, I've just been able to wipe uh, one or possibly two rifle then for, what was it, 90 munitions or so. Totally worth it. Even though I didn't kill the entire blob, I still managed to get a good number of those rifles dead. And that was totally worth um, the... Um, in the munition investment so if you can get away with trying to do a lot of damage with explosive like the lights please do okay, again so i'm going to use um uh, another demonstration here this time with the sturm Diga and the stuka combined with the infrared half track 
So now Glorious will attack the centre point, and as you can see through the infrared half check, I can see the blob's movement. So this can give me some time to put my Sturm Tiger in a position that I could possibly anticipate this blob's movement. So I think the blob's going to come right now into here. There's an anticipate coming in, and I'm going to fire off here with the Sturm Tiger shell. Hopefully get some kills here. Did a lot of big damage, and now maybe uh, Glorious will retreat back to base. And as he retreats back to base where his um, maybe his major is, I can then follow up with maybe a Stuka barrage. So when the blob retreats all the way back to base, and we can see that its direction of the of the base might be over here, I'm going to try and maybe get a nice little Stuka barrage off on a, on possibly his retreat path um, or, or where I think his major might be. A, a, a calculated guess, and um, I might be able to get some nice kills. Look, there's his med, med, med truck. And, you know, almost wiped it and got a little bit more DPS done there. So it's always worth trying to follow that up. So once you retreat the bump, if you've got something to follow that up with, like a, um, you know, you could drop a flare in the sky and then you could drop some off-map artillery on, on on where you think his major might be or follow up with like I like just done there with a Stuka barrage. Try and go for it because you might get a lot of nice kills because um, that's the best time and probably one of the easiest times you can guarantee kills because if you can... Add, time the retreat you know the retreat to come back to that major or the base um, at the right time uh, whether it be even soviets or whatever because they're all gonna have they, they're forced they only got one retreat spot right and they're gonna always have to go back to the main base and um so if you can time that barrage in you can almost guarantee a, a couple of wipes and uh see you know that's definitely a good time to to try and save your munitions up for if you can uh, you know force your opponent to retreat and then uh, follow up with some nas nasty artillery barrage Okay, so we're here to just have another another example here. Here comes a big OKW blob, you know, coming forward to try and get the cutoff point and maybe engage the base. Um, you know, they're all bunched up close together, and they're and now you know here comes a, a, a Goliathy barrage. You can see how much damage this does to a blob that's all bunched up together. You know, I, I, I might retreat now, and you know it still might be too late. Here comes the you know, this might be. Uh, Another Calliope Bros coming in here on the retreat path as well. And you can see I've lost a lot of men there. Um, um, all because I've been blobbing up. I might have not have lost that many squads, but still, all that manpower bleed is huge. Okay. Grenadiers are they are moving. Same thing again here. Here come uh, some, this time it's going to be some B4 firing. As you can see here, look at the amount of damage that does. Um, to my squads there. I'm going to try and retreat and get out of there. The, the second B4 might fire on my retreat path and absolutely wreck me. Um, normally you probably wouldn't ever see two B4 in, in a game, but you can see how much damage they do when all the squads are pumped up. All of those men die and I've just lost so many units. Uh, and uh, you can look on the B4s, they've got 8 kills and 8 kills, oh, 8 kills each, so 16 kills. So, and, and I've, you know, not achieved anything from that. So, and then I've just got a, a lot of huge amount of manpower reinforcements to do, and that's a huge bleed. So that's gonna let not for me. I can't afford to then buy maybe a tiger or something. There you go, guys. That's the end of the tip of the week video. I hope you found that information useful. And now, uh, when you ever come up against blobs, you now know what to do. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me a like. And if you want to comment below, please do. If you've got any advice that you'd like to see in the future. Um, uh, you'd like to request then I could try and uh, put more another tip um, together for that one um, if you'd like to support me I have a twitch uh, page where you can subscribe on I also have a patron page as well with links to those in the description below um, and yeah guys thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week